The season of giving returns, and as always this time of year, we turn to a young Tom Superman whose remarkable struggle against a debilitating syndrome is dwarfed by his commitment to bring sunlight to others through sunlight, through support, sustenance, and spirit. Chris Nolsey is in the town square tonight, and through the Chris's Fight for a Cure Foundation, he's on the hunt for food donations that will help People's Pantry of Tom's River Supply Thanksgiving dinners for more than 700 families. Plus, this is Chris's annual drive for Children's Specialized Hospital at Tom's River. That's also underway, and we're going to learn about Chris's deep connection to that facility and about his mission as well as his. Nice to have you back. Thank you for having me, Tom. I don't think a year can go by when we don't have you in. Um, first of all, what kind of a year has it been for you? Um, it's been a little rough, but it's also been pretty accomplishing. I've gone to college and I'm going to a course on campus as well as online courses, so it's been pretty busy. Now you're at OCC, right? I'm actually at Kane University now. You're all the way, you drive all the way to Kane? Uh, well, or it's Kane, Kane at Ocean. At, yes. Okay. So you're back and you're into the four-year mode? Yes. Right. How's that going for you? It's going pretty well so far. So right. I'm going into my second semester there. All right. Now, you're juggling classes, you're juggling a personal life, and two, found, two drives at the same time at a foundation. How do you do this? I have a lot of support, thankfully, and that helps me get through a lot of it. But a lot of it is also just me pushing through and knowing that my struggles are still helping others. And if you're interested to know about that support, you can find Chris's Fight for a Cure Foundation on Facebook, or you can go to ChrisFightForACure.com. Very nice web page. Thank you. Uh, who helped you with that? Or did you come with it all yourself? Um, well, the web page is actually still under development, mm -hmm. but we have it to where it links you right to our Facebook page, and right now that's our main site for lo uh, details and locations. Let's talk about the drives a little bit. Um, Thanksgiving is just about here, and uh, you're facing a deadline, so um, how did you come about the perimeters in which you're working this year? People's Pantry, uh, how do they communicate with you what they need? And how are you going about it? Um, well, we, my mom actually came up with the initial idea and she asked me about it and I thought it was a great idea. We've been working with the People's Pantry for a while now, even outside of my foundation. And so when we're in a position where we can help any sort of organization or foundation such as the People's Pantry, I want to be able to do that. And so when it came up as a possibility for us to be able to help them give Thanksgiving dinners to so many families, we decided just to set up a bench in front of our house and ask people, can you donate this food or non-perishable foods or would you be able to at least donate money that we can spend towards the drive? Mm -hmm. And we've been getting a lot of support from so many people. And that bench is right on Thomas Street, correct? Yes, 40 yeah. Thomas Street. Uh -huh. what, is it kind of a surprise when you go out and you see, you see goods just occupying the bench? Yes, there's actually been a few times where we haven't even known who dropped off stuff. So we just say thank you on Facebook and someone says you're welcome and that's how we find out who it was. <laughs> uh, um, Let's, 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 well, where'd you get the bench anyway? My grandparents actually purchased it, and that was their sort of yearly donation to the foundation. Mm -hmm. um, what's, what's been your contact with People's Pantry? They're good people. They've been at this uh, since the Superstorm, and uh, it's really taken root. Yes, we were actually there when they were initially in construction at their very first location and we sort of watched them develop into what they are now and we've seen how far they've come and i don't remember exactly how we initially came in contact with them but we were doing a lot of help with families over near the seaside area right after sandy hit because again i'm in a position where i can help people 
And so after Hurricane Sandy hit and I saw how bad off people were, I turned to my parents and I said, we have to do something. I'm in a position to help. I want to help. And so through helping other families, we got in contact with the People's Pantry and we've sort of just been keeping in contact throughout the years. Casey, just joining us. Chris Nelsey is in the town square tonight. And we always welcome him back. He's, he's a, a go-getter. And right now he's going and getting food and gifts, two separate drives that will run uh, for the holidays. Now, um, just in case, there's always somebody who isn't familiar with your story. And I know you don't want to go through the entire thing, but um, it's even you've even taken the liberty of posting some of this on your web page over at um, Chris's Pfeiffer, Chris Pfeiffer and Cure uh There were the cancer diagnoses. Yes. There were the recurrent tumors, uh, trigeminal neuralgia. Yes. And dystonia. Yes. Uh, all of this in the span of, you're how old now? I'm 21. All of this in the span of 21 years, and most of your 21 years have been occupied in one way or another with one or more of these. Um, well, I was actually diagnosed with cancer at the age of 12. Mm -hmm. So over just the past eight or nine years has been the time span for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, it's just about half your life. Yes. <laughs> So, um, last I checked, you had undergone about 20 or just a shade over 20 operations? Yes. Has it held at 20 or, or um, where are we? I'm holding at 21 holding and at 21. hopefully staying at that. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us a little bit about your progress since then. I mean, have, have, has all of this gone into remission? Uh, are there still flare-ups, uh, and you know, what, what's the doctor telling you? As far as the cancer, thankfully I've been cancer-free since 2008. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't received any more treatment for that other than just um, progression MRIs to make sure there is no growth in the tumor and there is no site of action with the cancer. They're saying that it's likely never going to come back. As far as the trigeminal neuralgia, I've had four surgeries for that. And since the last two, I've thankfully had no pain at all mm -hmm. with regards to that disease. Yeah, let's, let's explain that a little bit because it's, it's a kind of an arcane term. Not everybody's going to know what that even is. So I, I know it involves a great deal of pain facially. Yes. Um, the trigeminal nerves basically run through your face and they control the sensation, the movement, the motor portions of your face. Mm -hmm. And basically what happens to most people is either there will be tumors or just the veins and arteries that run throughout your face will start to wrap around the nerve and they'll destroy the protective coating that wraps the nerve and then it'll start to rub directly on the nerve and aggravate the nerve and that's what will cause the most pain and then anything that sets off that nerve such as touching your face, wind to the face, even the slightest breeze, will bring most people to their knees. And this obviously affected every phase of your life, right down to sleeping. Yes. I actually didn't get much sleep with it. Uh -huh. What sort of medications are even available for that? There's a few medications that are going through trials right now. But usually anti-seizure medicines, certain ones, have effects that work with nerve pain. And so they'll de uh, usually prescribe those before doing surgery and try to calm the pain by using those sorts of medications. Mm -hmm. Explain the dystonia a little bit. Um, that's, that's another one that it's, it's only starting to actually gather attention. Basically they're not quite sure or completely understand it but the nerves that control your muscles in certain areas in my case in my shoulder 
they start to become unresponsive. And when your brain is telling the nerves to do something, they won't do that and they'll backfire. And in my case, my shoulder is being backfired and so the nerves in the front of my chest are pulling my shoulder forward and the nerves in the back of my chest are trying to pull it back but they can't. And so it's sort of a tug of war with my shoulder right now. And so they just, um, every three or six months they inject the muscles with Botox and that sort of calms down the nerves so that it can try and let my shoulder readjust into a normal position. Um, it's got, at some point you have to say to yourself, what now? You know, at some point you must wake up and just go, okay, what is it going to be this time? Uh, and th that takes a tremendous amount of strength to cope with that. Where do you find that strength? I find it in the point that I know I'm helping others and I'm, as much as I'm struggling or I have difficulties, I know that through me going through the pain and going through the struggles and going to the doctors, getting diagnoses or trying different medications, seeing what helps, what doesn't help, my story can help other people that may go through this same exact situation a day from now, a month from now, a year from now. And doctors will be able to say, well, I've seen this with this patient, mm -hmm. so let's try this route and see if it works. And I've even been witness to this through a disease that I'm the first recorded medical case to have follow-up treatment for. And another patient went into the same surgeon not even two years after me with the same rare problem. And the surgeon called us up and said, I have a patient with basically the exact same situation as you did. Am I allowed to give him your information so he can talk to you? And later that year we were meeting with the family and he was getting ready for surgery to go through the same thing I did. So it's very rewarding to be able to go through the struggles and know that someone else can benefit from it. And I'll add you have quite a set of parents behind you too. Thank you, I do. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Chris Nolsey of Tom's River is our guest and uh, you you owe it to yourself to take a walk over to chrispfeifferacure.com or visit Chris on his Facebook page. Chris's Fight for a Cure is all you have to do in the search engine there and it'll come right up for you. And you'll see what he's doing with his with his life and with his drives. Let's talk about the gift drive uh, for the Children's Specialized Hospital. Tell us about that special connection you've got with them. They, they figure prominently in your life. Yes. Um, they've I've always held a close connection to them. And when I went to high school in Tom's River High School South, the spirit, um, the spirit Club, which is run by Mr. Dave Carell Jr., um, he brings the Spirit Club over there every holiday to Christmas Carol to them and to the senior citizen care right behind it and so that's how I initially became accumulated with them mm -hmm. and I sort of just carried it one step further and after I graduated from high school south I wanted to build off of what Mr. Carell was doing and so I started collecting different teddy bears and then as time progressed we started asking the hospital hey, what would you need or what would the kids want for Christmas time or the holiday time? And now every year we ask them for a list about a few months before December so that we can start the drive and start collecting items and getting items ourselves. And then on about two or three weeks before Christmas, 
we'll bring everything over and go over with the Spirit Club, go Christmas caroling there and at the senior citizen home. And then we'll deliver the gifts to the patients and to the nurses and doctors at the specialized hospital. Why is it such an important place for you, Chris? Uh, just, I was, there was at one point that it was suggested that I become a patient there. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time that I heard of it. And then after going to High School South, being part of the Spirit Club and seeing how we could bring smiles to the kids' faces every time we go Christmas caroling there, I knew what it was like to be a patient at a hospital and I had amazing support. The, not all of these patients always have the best support and so anything I can do to help bring a smile to their face gives me hope and joy inside. When you look at each one of them, you see a little bit of you. Yes. There are I think 23 um, beds filled right now? Um, Something I along those around lines, 23 there. out of 26. Yes. There's a lot of little use in there. Yes. Um, now how do we, what kind of gifts do you need? How does one donate? Um, well, we actually have a flyer on our Facebook page that lists out all of the items that we are currently looking for. Mm -hmm. And it also has the flyer for the Thanksgiving drive and the different items that we are looking for for that. So if you just go to our Facebook page, you'll be able to see the flyer there, and we have everything basically spelled out for you for what we need. And I noticed that uh, if necessary, you've even got a little collection service going. Yeah. So you can't bring it to us, we'll come and get it from you. Yes. How does that work? Is, is this where we bring Dad into it? Um, it's sort of all of us. <laughs> it's a group effort. Um, we even have friends that are offering to go collect from their friends and then bring it to us. And basically it's just if someone is able to get things but doesn't necessarily have the time or the abilities to be able to drop it off at our house, then we're more than willing to be able to try and work something out where we can go to you to pick it up from you because any and all donations are greatly appreciated and we don't want to have to miss out because there's an issue with going from point A to point B. Right. Do you have collection deadlines? Uh, for the Thanksgiving food drive we're collecting until November 16th and for the holiday gift drive we're collecting until December 16th. Uh-huh. And um how are things going so far? So far we've gotten a lot of donations from both ends and so we're definitely very happy with the progress so far and we have a lot more donations that we know of that are still coming in. So it's definitely looking to be a very positive outlook. Chris Nolsey is our guest in the town square tonight. Tom's a native and has used his life to help other people in their lives. Uh, and all of this in the span of 21 short years so far. Uh, an amazing amount of energy being expended. Um, and where do you get all that energy? Um, I try to just make it appear. <laughs> I just try to keep pushing myself and Never say never. You've been, in case you, you're not aware, he's, he's got numerous commendations. Uh, I guess you, I don't know if you've got a room full yet, but I know Tom's River officials have uh, been very generous with, with their proclamations for you at all. Yes. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's got to, you've got to take some pride in that. that you know, your, your message has gotten to people who didn't even know you. Yes. Um, I'm very thankful for that because that lets me know that my message is reaching others and it's getting a positive message out to others. Mm -hmm. And that's all I can really hope and ask for is that everything that I'm pushing through and working towards is still having positive effects on others. 
Chris is having a positive effect on a lot of people, and we're going to find out a little bit more about him right after this. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Welcome back. <laughs> In the town square tonight is Chris Dalton of Tom's River. Um, regular guest of ours, at least once a year, who is uh, through his uh, foundation, Chris's Fight for a Cure Foundation, uh, is soliciting gifts for Christmas and food for Thanksgiving uh, through his Facebook page and through his web page and in person. Uh, the, uh, the Thanksgiving food is going to People's Pantry and there's a November 16th deadline to get that done. And then, uh, by December 16th, he'll have all the gifts that will be donated for Children's Specialized Hospital here in Tom's River. Uh, you can see all about these at his Facebook page. Just go to the search bar and uh, type in Chris's Fight for a Cure Foundation. It'll come right up. Or you can visit uh, ChrisFightForACure.com. He's got both of those going on. Young man, we have seen you age uh, through the year. We've seen you, we've seen you grow. Um, and you've been remarkably consistent as an individual. I have to say that. Thank you. Uh, you know, we can't, we, we can't look at Chris Nolsey and say, you know, there was a time when he was totally out of control, and now he's growing up. It seems like you've always been mature. Yeah. So let's, um, we know what we see. You know, right? we, we, we see a young man who's dedicated to helping others uh, despite, his own, despite his own setbacks. Let's look at it from your eyes. When you look out from Chris Nolsey's eyes, what do you see? What's changed in you? What's changed in, in people? Honestly, nothing has really changed a lot. Um, do you see the world differently than you did when you were, say, 17 or 12 or 15? I see it differently than I did before my cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. I have to say that I definitely appreciate the larger things, the more, I guess, things that you want but don't need. I see them less and I see the things that I need and don't necessarily want more. Mm -hmm. It's sort of the superficial things don't matter as much in life anymore, whereas the real important things, friends, family, working towards something that I believe in, fighting, constantly pushing through things and trying to move forward with my life seem to mean more to me than it did before I was diagnosed with cancer when I was still a young child that was just seeing life as nothing but positive. I guess it sort of opened my eyes more to some of the more less positive things and it's made me more modest. More modest? Yes. You could be more modest? It's hard for you to be more modest, but you're figuring out a way now, and, and that's an interesting point. I mean, you've got a, a cadre of friends, close friends, who've known you since school, and they know you now, and you've never lost touch with them, they've never lost touch with you, and they get you. Um, and you've even got more followers on, online. Yes. You've got people you don't even know. Yes. Well, probably why. What does it feel like to to like have people who are actually are fans of yours, if you want to put it that way, with their their devotees, their followers, and you know they've kind of lived your life along with you at times and gone through your struggles in their own way. Uh, that's that's kind of give you a warm feeling. Yes, I'm mostly I'm just very thankful. For their support and to know that everything I'm going through is having a positive effect and is has made them interested in following my life and following all of the steps that I'm taking to make sure that my life and everything that I've gone through has an impact, a positive impact on others. It's just, I'm very thankful for all of their support. 
Okay, now I know that you're modest and I know that you're totally out of directed, but I have to ask you, what's in the future for you? What, what you know, you, you're 21, you're, you're getting through college. What happens next? After college, I'm going to look for a job in the finance field. Finance? And yes. So. What yeah. draws you to finance? I'm fascinated. Um, I've always been very drawn to math and science. Mm -hmm. They have always been my strong suits. And initially I was going to go to college for engineering, but I wasn't able to due to medical situations and mm -hmm. such. And so my next choice was finance. So I've been going to school for that, and I've been really enjoying the work. And so I've, I'm really looking forward to pursuing a career in that field. What aspect of finance fascinates you the most? When we, what will be your dream job in that? Most likely a financial advisor. Oh, you want to tell people how to manage their money? Eh, yeah. That's a lot of figures. I mean, you've got a lot of clients, and they've all got different situations. You, I suppose I'm asking the obvious, but you can juggle all of that, right? Yes. You've managed to juggle everything else up until this point. Yes. A remarkable young man. Thank you. And um, anything that you want to get out there? In the limited time we have left, we have about a minute. Uh, I would just like to thank everyone for their support so far, and Please, if you're hearing this and you read about the, either of the drives or both of them, if you can help out in any way, it's greatly appreciated. Food for the People's Pantry and the Gifts for Children's Specialized Hospital of Tom's River. Uh, it's all at uh, his Facebook page. Just log on to Facebook and head for Chris's Fight for a Cure. Or you can go to chrisfightforacure.com. You'll find it at both of those places. And uh, the collection bench is right outside the house on Thomas Street, right? Yes. All right. So there's plenty of ways to get in touch. By all means, please do. And uh, follow along with us in, in the life's journey of one of the most remarkable people in Thomas River or probably anywhere. Town Square Tonight is a presentation of Town Square Media in New Jersey Shore News Division. Our technical coordination and call facilitation is by Mark Anthony. Video and audio coordination, Bradley James and Tom Trimley. Our programming consultant is Steve Ardolino. And the Vice President of Operations for News for Town Square Media New Jersey is Eric Scott. I'm Tom Mongelli. I want to thank you very much for listening. Have a good evening.